What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. Waterloo, 1815, the truth behind Napoleon's defeat by History Marche. Let's go. Thanks for the little side note, like. Late May, 1815. Exiled to Elba in 1814, Napoleon had returned in March mm -hmm. and is once again Emperor of the French. Europe, committed to restoring the old order, has declared war on Napoleon. That they did. They plan to invade France and restore the monarchy. The Russian How's the desktop and Austrian audio? armies are approaching from the east. The Anglo-Dutch army under Wellington is headquartered in Brussels. Okay. The Prussian army under Blücher is headquartered in the Mur. Napoleon is vastly outnumbered. Let's be honest, there was, there was no way. There was no way he was going to be able to stop this amount of people. Um, and this amount of a coalition force um, against him. There was just no way he was going to do it. King Louis XVIII has fled France and set up court in Ghent, 60 kilometers west of Brussels. From Ghent, the king's agents and spies have infiltrated Napoleon's government and army. Okay, interesting. Secret Napoleon information provided by spies in Twitter. Interesting. Okay, I'm glad he's put this up. This is quite interesting. Am I watching this in 780? 360. There we go. That's much clearer. Pace wise, post kings. Interesting. The role of Fouché is well known. Yeah, it it is a big state. Uh, big state? Big state. Wow, I really can't talk. It's a big feat to have so many great nations declare war on you. Um. Yeah, it is, it is crazy that you put that much fear into them. But they are all your border allies. It is just the fact that they are all great powers at that point in time. But they are all bordering you. So, of course, they're going to be instantly threatened by you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's why they're going to they're gonna take action. Because they're, they're all surrounding you. So, of course, you're going to have that sort of uh, repercussions. Plotting Napoleon's downfall from the moment he returned to France. However, there were many others. The king also has spies and agents in the French army, many in direct communication with Ghent, providing oh, intelligence. Wow. Along the frontier, the king has stationed officers to collect deserters and sow discord. Mm. One such officer was the Marquis de Castry, a former aide-de-camp of Davou, now stationed in Namur whose staff included a former curacier, Friedrich Rie. So imagine being outnumbered and then having all of these obs uh, other obstacles in your way. Like, it is a near impossible feat for him. So difficult. Napoleon faced a severe shortage of horses mm. and the financial mm. situation was perilous. Hurdle after hurdle for this man. An insurrection was raging in the Vendée, requiring troops to be dispatched to the interior. I didn't know that information, so he was also dealing with a revolt within a province as well. Once the Allies invaded, his military situation would arguably be better than in 1814. But okay. his political situation was unstable. Mm. He needed an event to rally the country around him before the Allied invasion. 
Okay, interesting. Brussels was the answer. Right. A lightning stroke to seize the Belgian capital and possibly return Belgium to France would captivate the nation. Traitors would be shaken from the army, and Napoleon would gain the political stability necessary to deal with those in government. Okay, that's an interesting thing. So by forcing the military to take action, he then forces anyone who's in a sort of... Uh, um, sitting on the fence um, he sort of draws those people out and then takes them out of the equation which is really really interesting yeah i'm really interested if it's if, if this video is all just about the intelligence side of things i'll be really interested like napoleon decided to strike On June 3rd, Napoleon ordered Marshal Sue, who was Napoleon's Major General, commander of the army headquarters and responsible for distributing his orders, to bring Gerard's 4th Corps from Metz to Philippeville. Napoleon also reorganized the cavalry, taking divisions attached to the infantry corps and creating four cavalry corps okay. under the overall command of Marshal Grouchy. Mm. On June 4th, Sue so gave a detailed report to Napoleon of the locations of the infantry corps of Army de Nord and the time required to reach the staging areas for an invasion. I'm really liking finding out all the intelligence these people are getting and how they're using it to their advantage because it's got to be so key um, having the intelligence of the opponent. Yeah, it's not spoke about enough uh, within war and within um, storylines, I believe. First Corps at Maubeuge, two-day march, leaving on the 11th. Second Corps to the right of Maubeuge, on the Sambre, one-day march, leaving on the 12th. Third Corps, north of Philippeville, two-day march, leaving on the 12th. Okay. Fourth Corps at Philippeville, seven or eight-day march, leaving on the 6th. Mm. Sixth Corps, previously indicated to be at Aven, five-day march, leaving on the 9th. Imperial Guard at Aven, staggered march, arriving on the 13th. Everything was planned so the army would be in position by the evening of the 12th okay. to be moved into final positions on the 13th and launched on the Sombra on June 14th, the anniversary of the victories of Morongo and Friedland. Mm -hmm. Napoleon mm -hmm. planned to come between the Anglo-Dutch and Prussian armies. The French army, vastly superior to either Allied army, would compel the Allies to retreat. As Just causing like uh, a splinter within the ranks and uh, ca causing a division and chaos would just be so pivotal at that point in time and be really, really useful. I think that's, that's his thought process. Uh, okay. Salt uh, had replaced his. Uh, Salt had this point replaced Berthier, his chief of staff. Okay, consider that all of the Napoleon army's campaigns were organized like this with written paper orders. Well, yeah, that the fact it was uh, like in this time, it was all written papers, and then for that having to be passed from person to person. Um, is such an incredible feat and it's the things that sort of i really enjoy uh finding out about the most it's it's absolutely insane like like imagine imagine having to to make sure that all of your individual armies have had these notes had these orders clearly spoken out to you and they have to have them achieved and activated they're not the words i'm looking for but i don't know what the word i'm looking for here is just just deployed in the right manner and with the effective time frame is just so impressive and i rambled a bit on there and we're going to continue <laughs> either could survive a battle on their own napoleon would occupy brussels by june 16th mm -hmm. a thunderclap heard across europe the king would be chased from the continent and the traitors purged from his government and army. On June 5th, 
Sue issued the orders to Girard. They had been adjusted to have the 4th Corps arrive in Rocroix by June 13th. Mm. The Emperor has ordered me to inform you that his plan is that you begin the Army de la Moselle's march upon receipt of this order, that is to say, 7th of June, and that you direct it following the itinerary attached to Rocroix, where it must be on the 13th of this month, without fail. Mm. On June 6th, Sue sent orders to the rest of the army. First Corps was ordered to be ready to march within three hours of receiving orders. Second wow. Corps was ordered to concentrate three near hours. Maubeige by June 13th. Third Corps was ordered to concentrate between Marienburg and Chimay by June 13th. Mm. Fourth Corps was already ordered to require by June 13th. Sixth Corps was ordered to Aven by June 13th. The Guard had already been ordered to Aven, and Groshi's four reserve cavalry corps were also ordered into position. Okay, okay. Insane. Napoleon had ordered the formation of two columns on the frontier and planned to use the day of June 13th to put the army into a final position. He had positioned the army so that it could cross the Sambre at Maubeuge and fall on Mont, mm -hmm. or it could cross at Chalois. Either location would put Napoleon on a major road to Brussels. That's smart, giving himself options to be able to move, just, just be able to adapt his plan. I like that. That's very, very smart. Place the French army between... This might not necessarily go into the edit version, like, but uh, just to make sure I'm correct, uh, Berthier, um, that was like I think in the Napoleon Marshall series, he was in the top three, wasn't he? And um, he wasn't necessarily the best um, actual commander, but he was the person that put all of lights not lights <laughs> all of napoleon's thoughts and plans actually into action is that correct am i getting that correct i'm gonna wait a minute because i just want to make sure i'm correct there before i start i just want to make sure i'm correct yeah i think i'm getting the right marshal correct or thinking of the right person Yeah, that's the one. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, we haven't done our ranking system, but he's definitely up there. He's, he's one of the people I, I rated the most. Just having someone, um, be able to, uh, just help you implement your strategies and be so reliant, um, just to put the, the, the. So, a lot of people don't realize how much effort goes into the back scenery of things even including this just in a lot of things there's a reason why managers and and people like that exist because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that you don't really see and having someone help you do that is just so valuable so valuable um so yeah it was a shame that he wasn't around at this point because obviously there would have been a big big difference if he was here and able to sort of help napoleon Wellington. Yeah, yeah, I remember that as well. That he had fled at this point. So yeah, it was. Uh, you said it earlier. It was. Um, let me see. Shuset. I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Salt. It was Salt who was uh, basically took over at this point. Um, yeah. Shame. A blucher. On June seventh, Napoleon ordered Sue to Lille to assure the security of the French frontier west of the planned advance. By June 11th, Sue was ordered to return to Law in order to meet Napoleon on June 12th. On June 10th, Napoleon finalized the concentration. Okay. With Sue absent, Bertrand, Grand Marshal of the Palace, would be responsible for the dictation and distribution of the orders. Mm -hmm. Two orders would be written that day. What the were first, they? Position the army in a square south of Maubeuge, with a corner of the square pointing directly at Mont. Okay. The second order written put the army in three balanced columns on roads to Charlois. It is this second order that Bertrand distributed to the army generals. 
The plans for Mons existed only as a draft on Bertrand's notes, and an original sent to Sue. These orders were sent to Long, where Sue was expected to arrive on June 11th. Did Napoleon ch Wait, so what, were two orders... Wait, were two orders sent to... ...with a corner of the square pointing directly at Mont. The second order written put the army in three balanced columns on roads to Charleroi. It is this second order that Bertrand distributed to the army generals. The plans for Mons existed only as a draft on Bertrand's notes and an original sent to Sue. These orders were sent to Long, where Sue was expected to arrive on June 11th. Did Napoleon change his mind? Or was the order to advance on Mont a carefully constructed ruse meant to fool the Allies? Wait, so so has Salt got the wrong plans? Is Salt even dealing with it? Or the people at Leon? Uh, uh, they, or was it actually just a, a counter a counter deception type of thing? That is Fouché interesting. Claimed he had an agent steal the plans of the campaign. A claim that Sir Walter Scott confirmed during the occupation of Paris after Waterloo. Okay. However, Fouché was playing both sides. Ah. And he arranged for the interception of these plans at the border. If the Allies defeated Napoleon, Fouché would say he tried to steal the plans. But if Napoleon won, he would say he captured a spy. Ah, uh, I see. During June, the Allies repeatedly <clears throat> heard rumours of an attack on Mons. Is it possible Napoleon was giving the Allies and their agents in Paris false information in order to keep Wellington west of Charleroi? Okay. There okay. are a couple of facts that support the Mons plan as a ruse. Yeah. First, unlike the Charleroi plan, all of the positions given are imprecise. Second call is to the rear of Maubeuge. First call is near and to the rear. Third call is to the right, etc. This is unlike any order Napoleon sent in 1815. Oh, I see. I see, if you look at the other map, you can start seeing the differences. Hmm, interesting. Two seconds, I'm gonna cough, guys. Okay, yeah, I do see the, the differences plan, with the, the, the way people are set up. Sent to the generals is absolutely precise, with a location for each formation's headquarters. Second, Groshi had recently been given command of the newly organized Cavalry Corps and Fourth mm -hmm. Corps, and had been recently ordered to join the Army de Nord. Napoleon could hope that the Allies were unaware of these events, and both are excluded from the Mons Plan letter Bertrand addressed to Sue. Mm. On June 11th, Sue, for reasons unknown, remained at Aven. He was not in long when Napoleon's orders arrived, and he would only receive them late in the day of June 12th in Aven. It's crazy how... Because th me and Jack don't study this, and we don't write papers about it, um, and we don't sort of... We're not able to sort of... Um, the information so if we like do something over a week or over a couple of weeks the information that we store up because we don't like sort of use it some of it gets lost so obviously of course i remember um that he didn't arrive on time from other videos but just then i got shocked for a second just because you forget those little bits of information um uh, from time to time uh hopefully by re-watching these bits and pieces you do remember it or like in conversations i find that um a lot of the information comes back but yeah just just at, at moments in time you get shocked and you're like oh wait no i do remember that um i think it's just quite funny considerable time was lost as the courier must have waited in long for sue's arrival until it was clear he was not coming sue initially began executing the orders for the advance on charleroi Mm -hmm. and then switched to the plan for more. Had two orderlies been sent to law, but arrived in a van in reverse order, mm. thus confusing Sue? Or had Sue received the intercepted false Mons orders after the Charleroi orders? Whatever oh, the event, Sue had adopted the Mons plan, contrary to Napoleon's final wishes. I see. Napoleon left Paris on June 12th and arrived in a van on June 13th. 
He immediately countermanded Sue's orders and ordered the army into the three columns for an advance on Charleroi. Mm. As Sue plainly said to Van Damme, according to the orders that I sent to you yesterday, you were to gather your army corps in Beaumont. But the Emperor has again ordered the execution of the Order of the Day from the 10th of which I sent you the appellation. According to which you were to gather your troops during the day of the 13th in front of Philippeville. It is thus the dispositions uh, of the order given by the Emperor on the 10th that you must follow. I bet both of them were fuming. Both of them fuming for individual reasons. They were both absolutely fuming. Yeah, I do also agree like that history do, does turn and these little uh, small details are um just so big when like if you do forget them they are so vital uh in the events that sort of play out later on the rest of the army was given similar orders due to the delays introduced by sue not being in law and giving the wrong orders napoleon would delay the advance until june 15th van damme would receive the orders too late and napoleon would order him to remain in beaumont okay thus overloading the center column Mm. Napoleon used June 14th to move the army closer to the frontier. Napoleon heard from his spies that the Allies had not moved on June 13th or June 14th. Okay, he interesting. He had every reason to believe he had achieved his goal of concentrating his army on the Sombre without Wellington or Blücher knowing. Uh. At 11.30 p.m., Neisenau, the Prussian chief of staff, began the concentration of the Prussian army. Right. French traitors had informed him of the impending attack. Mm. The 12 plus hours gained allowed the Prussians to field an army at Sombrev. Again, such a vital thing, them having that extra 12 hours. And 12 hours when you're moving your men by foot, not using motor, motor, uh, motor bills or anything along them lines is just so vital 12 hours is so so vital it's even nowadays 12 hours of extra time extra knowledge uh, is so so vital as the great prussian historian leto vorbeck states without this treason committed by members of the french army the surprise intended by napoleon would have been successful to an even stronger degree than was the case now mm -hmm. Though delayed and worried about the advance via Mons, the gathered Prussian army allowed Wellington to order the concentration of his army at Quatre Bras okay. without fears of immediate destruction. Napoleon's plan. Oh no, it's not looking good. Plan was to prevent Allied cooperation. But not only were Wellington and Blücher working together on June 16th, they literally were able to meet in person. Yeah, yeah. There was no, there was nothing Napoleon could do. Everything went wrong for him at this point in time. Maybe he should have stayed and and picked a different time to come back, because um, this was just unfortunate for him. <clears throat> Napoleon believed on June sixteenth he would push a single Prussian corps aside. Yep. And force march that night with his guard to Brussels. Really but thought he could do it. Instead of facing no major battles. The French ended up fighting too. Mm. Ney and Wellington met at Quatre and fought to a stalemate, while Napoleon defeated Blücher at Ligny. However, go on, Wellington. On June eighteenth, the Allied armies were joined and would deal Napoleon a decisive defeat mm. at Waterloo. I say go on then Wellington, but now I think about it, he wasn't facing Napoleon, and we all know that Napoleon was best. Well, Napoleon's army was best when Napoleon was commanding it. French traitors had destroyed Napoleon's plan. But the root of this destruction was the delay which allowed the king's agents in the mm -hmm. French army to tip off the Prussians. Had Napoleon kept to his original schedule, the French army would have crossed the Sambre and occupied the Nivelle Namur wow. Road. Wellington and Blue. Really? If that. Wait, so he said if they had went with the first plan? Had Napoleon kept to his original schedule, the French army would have crossed the Sombre and occupied the Nivelle Namur Road. Well really did 
just everything went wrong for him. Clinton and Blücher would have had their communications greatly impacted and would not have been able to coordinate a defense. Mm -hmm. Napoleon would have occupied Brussels or had either army chosen to give battle, destroyed it. The delay was caused by Sioux remaining in Even and the confusion caused by two orders. What was the purpose of the Mons order? Had Napoleon changed his mind? Or had a carefully constructed ruse gone horrifically bad? I, I personally think that it was a, a carefully constructed ruse went bad. I think that's got to be the case, right? I don't think he changed his mind. I think he was trying to, I think he knew plans were getting out and he was trying to keep it, keep it sort of uh, concealed what he was really doing. On June 22nd, 1815, Napoleon signed his abdication. Mm. It is believed that this took place in the Salon d'Argent in the Palais d'Elysée, Napoleon's residence during the 100 days. The Salon d'Argent is in the rear of the palace on its okay. eastern side. If he signed his abdication here, it is possible the Salon d'Argent served as his office during 1815. Ah, uh, interesting. Adjacent to the office is a staircase. Napoleon would be exiled to St. Helena, mm. joined by his faithful companion, Bertrand. In 1821, after Napoleon's death, Bertrand returned to Europe, arriving in Portsmouth on August 1st. Mm. On I August remember 6th, this. Bertrand and his family travelled to London, where they took residence at Brunette's Hotel of Leicester Square, along with Montholon and his family. During their stay in England, Bertrand and Montholon were often visited by various officers and government officials. Wasn't he also um, met by Wellington? On September 15th, John Cam Hobhouse visited Bertrand and he recounted his visit in his diary. I called with D. Kinnaird on Count Bertrand at Brunette's Hotel. Okay. Found him and his Countess, his brother, and another person there. The Countess, mm. ill with a cough, a pale, tall, thin, agreeable looking woman of a certain age. The Count, very solicitous about her health. Okay. Bertrand drew near to me and spoke frankly about my book. Said the Emperor saw at once that il sautait de la classe, that he saw I had a recourse to good informants. Okay. That he at first had resolved to answer the book and to correct many points of which he alone has knowledge having the reins of government and could give a just account, that he observed I had altered my opinions after the Libre in the second edition. Oh, okay, I okay, wait a minute. Then he at first had resolved to answer the book. So he started basically correcting him on certain bits and points from the information that he had inside the government. Uh, could just give a count. So then for the second edition, I'm with you now, okay. It seen that they did wrong to suspect the Emperor had to debate about liberty when they should be defending their country against the foreigners. This alluded okay. to a note which Constant furnished me with. Bertrand told me that the reason why Napoleon discontinued writing his remarks on my book was first, he took up the employment and wrote those things which all the world knows. Okay. I did not ask him what he really wrote, but Montholon told Kinnaird that he wrote the account of the Battle of Waterloo, which Phillips published. The other reason was that he could not write on my book without exposing the treachery of many men still about the French court, uh, which he did not wish to do. Interesting. I said, Fouché, for instance. Yes, said Bertrand. I myself introduced by the back stairs to Napoleon, the courier who had Fouché's dispatches to the enemy, eight days before the Battle of Waterloo. Interesting, okay. Eight days. That was really interesting. I'm really enjoying this video. Thank you for the suggestion. Before the Battle of Waterloo, on June 10th, 1815, Napoleon and Bertrand, who were consumed with preparing the final concentration of orders for the campaign in Belgium, apprehended an agent of Fouché, carrying dispatches to the enemy. Mm. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Your support... 
that you know I'm subscribed. If you haven't already, head over to History Marseille's page and subscribe. They make amazing content. I really, really enjoyed that one.